Many believe that perhaps the Soviet Union would ultimately triumph in the space race to the moon. But while NASA's Apollo program carefully planned and prepared for a meticulous mission, the Soviets skipped important static ground tests as part of a frantic push to get their super heavy lift launch vehicle into the sky first. The untested Soviet N-1 rocket had the most powerful first stage ever built. Serious faults with its 30 engines would result in the largest man-made non-nuclear explosion ever, and it was all caught on tape. Soviet Space Successes The USSR accomplished one of the greatest goals set up by the space race and was the first to reach several achievements for mankind. Up to the beginning of the 1960s, the Soviets were clearly leading the space race in the eyes of many. Their program pioneered sending artificial satellites with Sputnik 1, launching an animal into orbit like the dog aboard Sputnik 2, sending a human to space to orbit the Earth, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin aboard Vostok 1, sending the first woman into space, cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova aboard Vostok 6, and even some lunar firsts. Although it was President Kennedy who publicly opened the door for competition on sending human beings to the moon and back, the Soviets were seemingly ahead of the game for a significant portion of the competition. Their Luna 2 was the first spacecraft to touch the moon, and the first man-made space exploration vehicle to come into contact with a celestial body that wasn't Earth. The first image taken of the far side of the natural satellite was also taken by the Soviets, with Luna 3. One of their unmanned spacecraft, Luna 9, achieved the first soft landing on the moon, and finally Luna 16 brought to Earth the first sample of extracted lunar soil. Meanwhile, the United States space program seemed to stall and suffer frequently. Up to 1961, the only American space race accomplishment had been launching astronaut Alan Shepard in a suborbital flight, not nearly as impressive as Soviet accomplishments up to that point. Rocket failure. It would take until the fall of the USSR for the United States to confirm that the Soviets had tried and failed to send men to the moon, as they declined to confirm or deny their efforts. It is now known that starting in 1959, the Soviets began work on their counterpart to the American Saturn V. Their N-1 rocket was a shorter and lighter rocket than the Saturn V, yet it was intended to launch out of the base with greater thrust. Unfortunately for the USSR, that incredible power was part of the reason why the rocket was never able to leave planet Earth. The N-1's rocket stage is the most powerful that has ever been built. No other collective of rocket engines has had such force. It counted on 30 NK-15 engines in its first stage, with 24 on as an outer ring and 6 at the center for roll control. It also counted on 8 engines in the second stage, 4 on the third, and 1 in the fourth stage. Part of the logic behind the inclusion of these multiple engines was the belief that if they worked individually on smaller rockets, that surely packing them together would yield positive results. In comparison, Saturn V only had five much bigger Rocketdyne F-1 engines. Unlike the N-1, the Saturn V never exploded. One element that contributed to the failure of the N-1 rockets was the fact that they used kerosene as a component for fuel in all of its main stages, whereas the American Saturn V utilized liquid hydrogen. This made the N-1 less impressive in terms of performance and the fuel combined with the large amount of engines set up the stage for a quick domino effect in case one of these rocket engines exploded. And they did. Every time. The largest explosion ever. There were four N1 test launches. Not one was successful. The first test went awry when transient voltage made the controls of the engine shut one of them off. The one across from it shut down to keep symmetry, provoking pogo oscillation in the second engine, tearing several parts off the engine, which in turn caused a propellant leak. A fire started from it, burning the wiring and messing the electrical components so that the controls could not recognize the problem. The rocket wreck was found only 52 kilometers or 32 miles from where it was launched. 
The second test launch may be the most spectacular of all the failures. After clearing the launch tower, something went wrong in the air. A bolt came loose and was suctioned by an oxygen pump, making one of the 30 engines of the first stage burst into flames. A light flashed and the rocket sped back down, with all but its 18th engine turned off. The 2,300 tons of propellant exploded. The base suffered from broken windows, flying debris, and fire that rained down just as it had flown up. The explosion equaled using several kilotons of TNT, the largest man-made non-nuclear explosion in recorded history. It was such a strong explosion that the Americans photographed the wreck from a satellite, not necessarily revealing what the USSR was doing, but confirming that something was being done. Thankfully, the worst case scenario did not occur. If the RP-1 and LOX had mixed, it would have formed a highly explosive gel, making the blast much more powerful. It took 18 months for the USSR to rebuild the launch pad. The kerosene-based fuel had proven just how dangerous it was to handle. Yet, the USSR tried two more times to prepare a moon landing rocket to take Soviet men. The third attempt was ruined by destabilization, and the fourth one exploded once more. This fourth explosion was the result of pogo oscillation, the same factor that ruined the first attempt. Violent motion resulting from varied rocket thrust that is almost impossible to fix led to differing pump pressures, in turn mixing acceleration and maximizing vibration. The fourth and last N1 vibrated until it exploded after managing to climb 40 kilometers. Waning Crescent The Soviet Union canceled its N1 program. The Soviet dream of a manned lunar mission mostly extinguished. The program was denied to keep a strong front until 1989, a little bit before the fall of the USSR. With Apollo 11, the US claimed the space first that the Soviets could not claim. <laughs> 